Chapter Twelve of Claude Lightfoot, or How the Problem Was Solved, by Father Francis Finn. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter Twelve, in which Kate and Claude are bitterly disappointed. Are you better, my poor boy? Claude, as he opened his eyes and caught these words, saw that he was in a luxuriously furnished room, and that a refined lady was bending over him while she applied smelling salts to his nostrils oh i can't move it said claude with a groan what dear my leg ma'am oh please have me taken home i'm afraid i shall not be able to go out to-morrow oh dear it's hard indeed my little boy you must stay quiet for some days claude groaned again ah oh he had set his heart upon that first communion morning what is your name claude lightfoot ma'am and how did you come to be so hurt i can't tell the story now ma'am some boys handled me roughly i had hurt my leg some days ago and now it's worse and to-morrow was to be my first communion day a doctor who had been summoned when claude swooned now entered he examined the little patient and said easily oh it's of no consequence the boy will be about as well as ever in a week and he was very much astonished when claude stifled a sob and turned his face away what's the matter boy are you afraid to lie in bed it's an ugly dream said claude oh please take me home can he be moved safely doctor asked the lady yes but he must be carried with great care and i'm your man to see to that said a brisk good-humoured young man of nineteen or twenty who had just entered the coachman is waiting outside and if you little fellow will trust me i'll carry you as though you were made of glass claude held out his hand to the lady thank you ma'am very much if you please i'll come to see you when i get well and thank you again and tell you all about it but just now i feel too bad good-bye god bless you said the lady very gently she was a mother and knew how sacred were the sorrows of children was it that brute of a warden that got you into this fix asked young mr andrews as the carriage rumbled over the street how did you guess cried claude in astonishment if anything goes wrong about here it's six to one that he's in it cheer up little boy you mustn't take your troubles too hard but you don't understand all said claude and then wan by mr andrews sympathy and revived by the light evening breeze he told his story mr andrews listened in amazement for despite claude's modesty and unassumingness in the telling his listener succeeded in piecing out the boy's bravery and determination throughout the sad ordeal little boy you're a trump he said warmly and you're worth a dozen by yourself if i weren't a civilized man and in a civilized city i'd give that warden such a cow hiding and mr andrews clenched his fists please don't touch him sir on my account i guess i'm done with him it was partly my own fault anyhow and now sir i'm beginning to feel bad about the way i acted in that loft i lost my temper awfully and it was just after confession our little friend was beginning to suffer scruples as i have already said he was quick to act and afterward prone to find wrong-doing where he had acted either without reflection or where he had followed as he saw matters what at the time appeared to be reasonable well sir exclaimed mr andrews with strong emphasis on the sir if ever you do nothing worse than that you'll go straight to heaven he added a moment later claude i'm not of your religion in fact i'm not much on any sort of religion but when you do go to communion won't you say a little prayer for me 
i'll be very glad mr andrews and my boy if ever you want a friend and don't know where to go just call on me i can't say how glad i am to have met you and mother will be very much disappointed and so shall i if you don't pay us that visit you promised her you're very kind sir said claude brightening ah here we are continued mr andrews as the carriage drew up at the sidewalk facing mr lightfoot's house and the driver threw open the door if you can manage to walk claude by leaning on me it will look better and not scare your people so much i'll try sir but the effort was beyond claude and while the coachman preceded them and rang the bell mr andrews carried his charge in his arms don't be alarmed said the young man as the servant threw open the door claude has injured his leg again there was a rustle and a quick movement and kate came hurrying down the stairs very pale but under great restraint my dear she said ignoring the stranger's presence and after kissing claude fixing her eyes intently upon his face what has happened it's nothing kate only i can't walk kate's features worked and her bosom heaved with emotion but with a mighty effort she restrained her feelings mamma must not know it too suddenly dear sir would you kindly carry him to his bedroom after me and very softly sir for my mother is an invalid and we must not shock her and kate led the way praying for strength kate said claude when he lay resting upon the white covered bed which no hand but his sister's ever arranged i want you to know this gentleman who has been ever so kind to me mr andrews thank you thank you a thousand times mr andrews for your goodness toward my brother don't mention it kate i am glad to meet the sister of such a brother and now added mr andrews with a fine delicacy i'll take my leave as i have an important engagement and beg permission to call on you with my mother to-morrow and mr andrews left a better wiser man for what little he had seen of kate and claude then kate having conducted mr andrews to the door returned laid her cheek beside that of her brother and put her arm round his neck but she said nothing what's the matter kit why don't you talk there was no answer say kit it's hard awful it's just too bad i can't go to holy communion to-morrow the arm tightened about his neck but still no answer i feel as bad about it as i can feel about anything kit it seems to pull at my heart say kit why don't you ask me to tell how it all happened then he heard a sob and raised his head with a start why kit you're crying that's what's the matter oh please don't i can't bear it to see you give up kit i'm a fool i'm a wretched i don't know what i might have known that it would come harder on you than on me and here i go on talking as if i was the only one in it now kit i can stand it you see if i can't i'll never complain again stop crying kit and i'll laugh and show you i can stand a knock as well as any one and there claude paused in unspeakable distress for kate sighed and sobbed as though her heart were breaking claude's joys and sorrows were hers and the girl even had claude not spoken could picture vividly her brother's sorrow and distress kit continued claude it's only the difference of a few days and i'll be prepared all the better i will then it will be just the same as if nothing had happened the pain is all over now kit and you'll see that i won't bother one bit claude spoke the truth in his distress at seeing his sister's burst of grief and in his self-reproach at awakening her sorrow he had as far as the will goes fully resigned himself to the inevitable delay at length kate raised her face and looked down upon him i couldn't help it dear she said softly it was cruel of me 
No, it wasn't, roared Claude. But I had to have my cry out. And now that's over, Claude, and we'll begin again. We had set our hearts on our first communion, Claude, and we weren't ready for such a shock, were we? That's so, answered Claude. But now we're going to go on, just the same as if nothing had gone wrong. Yes, Kit, we're both able to stand it now. And Claude told his story, but in such a way that instead of figuring as the hero, he made himself out to be the villain. He made light of Worden's cruelty, made light of the pain he had suffered, and dilated upon his own burst of anger. But Kate knew her brother, knew that his tender conscience exaggerated the evil of what he had done, and she at once cheered him and relieved his scruples in a few happy words. Then, wiping her eyes, she left Claude to break in the news to her mother. She performed her task well. She led Mrs. Lightfoot so gently to understanding the case that the shock and disappointment were reduced to a minimum. The father, when he returned, heard the news with dismay. He was strangely vexed. He saw that Claude was in no wise to blame, but his disappointment had to vent itself on something or someone, and he chose Claude. The little boy, on his bed of pain, listened humbly to his father's scolding. "'I deserved it, Kit,' he said that night. "'Pa knows that if I had behaved at school, Worden would have left me alone. But I'll be out in a few days, and we'll make it all right next Sunday.' Claude was again reckoning without his host. End of chapter 12